Hello, and welcome to Open Line. I'm Starlene Stringer. We all know distracted driving is dangerous, but every day we see drivers texting or doing other things behind the wheel. Some of us are even guilty of doing it ourselves. Our guests tonight are here to tell us why it's not a good idea. Rodney Adams is an Irving Municipal Court Judge, Wayne Lambert is Court Services Administrator, and Stephen Granberry is a Lieutenant with the Irving Police Department. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, thank you. This is a very important topic to touch on. Judge Adams, we're going to start with you first because Irving Municipal Court has a campaign focusing on the issue of texting while driving. Why is that cause so important? Well, first, thank you, Star Starlene, for um, inviting us over this evening. I would like to tell you that as a municipal court judge, um, we have jurisdiction over fine only offenses, misdemeanors, which include traffic violations. And as part of our judicial training, we are required to go in and uh, get trained on what the latest trends are with traffic safety and uh, driving habits and the like. Mm -hmm. So as part of our judiciary training, uh, we were made aware of some of the underlying dangers that could be, uh, could be uh, foisted upon our citizens if they use cell phones irresponsibly. You see, cell phone usage is on the increase and so are the number of people that are using them and, and the applications that they're being used for. I come from a generation, as many of us do, where when cell phones were first, uh, were first uh, brought into the market, mm -hmm. they, were, they were called car phones, right. ironically. And they were called car phones <laughs> because those persons who were using them uh, found them pro uh, productive in terms of uh, being able to get business taken care of. But one thing that didn't come across with car phones were in use were that they generally the people who were using them were not the ones who were actually driving the car. Mm. So as time goes on, we have generations that are now um, amongst that have grown up with cell phone usage as a productivity tool, uh, also as um, a means of entertainment, communication, and the like. And they're very nice to have, but there are some underlying dangers that could befall all of us if we're not aware of how uh, usage in the inappropriate place such as driving uh, could, be, could, could befall them. So that's why we're here. We want everyone to be aware of uh, how to use these cell phones responsibly. Wonderful. And, and Wayne, we definitely want to talk more a little bit about that. Why is it so important to focus on the bad sides of texting, which texting while driving is not good? Well, I, I will tell you, to, to Judge Adam's credit, several months ago, he, uh, he called me into his office, he and the Air Municipal Court Judge, Judge Anderson, and, and basically, every November, there's a week dedicated to municipal courts, municipal court weeks, and it's to kind of celebrate the accomplishments of municipal courts and so forth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One of the things that they had a desire to do was to add something meaningful to that week for court staff and, and for the community. And one of the things that was very much a hot topic and still is a hot topic is texting with driving, distracted driving. And so we sat down and all agreed upon that that would be just something that we would have an opportunity to really kind of share with, with folks and push out the message because we do, at, at municipal court, we actually see more people in municipal courts in the state of Texas than all other courts combined. Wow. And as Judge uh, Adams said, a lot of what we handle are traffic cases. So we, we see a lot of juveniles, we see a lot of people that are, you know, have speeding tickets in our offenses. And so it was a good opportunity to push out a, a good message, a meaningful message to a lot of folks. Definitely. And Lieutenant Granberry, um, how just distracting, but not just distracting, but how dangerous can texting while driving be? Well, it, it is the most alarming of, of all of the distractions uh, because it does involve all three uh, of the uh, distractive uh, um, types of distraction. I mean, you have visual which is when you take your eyes off the road and look look around down where you know down drop something in the floorboard you're using your eyes you have manual because uh, you're, you're you're handling the phone uh, itself and then you have cognitive because your mind is not on what you're doing your mind is not on your task at mm. hand you know your mind is on what's going on with the phone so you know when you're talking on the phone you might still have your your vision on the road right. but when you're texting all three of your senses, all three of those are focused on that task at hand and not on the driving where you should be focused. Interesting. Tell us about some of the cases you've seen involving texting and driving here in the city. Uh, well, I, I got behind somebody uh, recently that I thought was intoxicated hmm. and had her pulled over. I was in my personal car at the time, had her pulled over and the officers walked up and got her out of the car and started to do the, the standard field sobriety testing uh, because her driving, she was hitting the curb she oh, wow. was driving 20 miles an hour below the speed limit. Uh, she was crossing the line, and then she would speed up. 
And when she was pulled over, she got out. She was sober as a judge. Pardon me, judge. But uh, <laughs> but she, you know, she was on the phone. She was texting on the phone. Wow. Yeah. And that's wow. that's a good example of, of how bad uh, it can affect your driving. Oh, definitely. And, and you mentioned, Judge, uh, Judge Adams, have you done a lot of research into the topic? What surprised you the most from what you have read? Well, just to echo what uh, Lieutenant Granberry was saying uh, with his observations, uh, what the research has shown is that just by virtue of, and we need to make a distinction between uh, just cell phone usage and texting. Mm. When it comes to cell phone usage, the research has shown us that although it's emerging, but it shows that a person is 400 times more likely to be involved in an accident while using a cell phone hmm. uh, than not. In addition to that, if they are texting, the percentage of the probability goes up on an order of magnitude. The research shows that a person is 800 times more likely to have an accident to as much as 2,300 percent more likely to have an accident while, if they're texting while driving. Wow. And that is alarming. That is definitely alarming. And Wayne, I know you've done some research and study into it too. Same question for you. Well, first of all, I will tell you I've done some research into it because quite frankly I have a 17-year-old son. So uh, <laughs> there, there's some personal reasons as well to, sure. to research this. But I, I will tell you the thing, and, and uh, Lieutenant Granberry really pointed out something that was uh, somewhat alarming to me, is if you're texting and driving, it has the, it impairs your driving capability as much as uh, being legally intoxicated. Hmm. And, and that really kind of hit home. It really kind of drives home the point that, you know, you can't do both effectively. And, and it is dangerous, and, and it dangerous to an extent of, uh, you know, basically it's the equivalent of drink, you know, drinking and driving, and that, wow. that's really something that, you know, hit home. Exactly, which is kind of what Lieutenant Granberry was saying, you know. So let's go to one of our Facebook questions now. Um, Kelly Hughes asked this question, why isn't texting and driving illegal? That is a crazy thing to me, she says. So we'll give that question to you. Um, Judge Adams, what would you say to Kelly? Well, in answer to your question, uh, this past legislative session that uh, there was actually a bill that was just about to become law, uh, but at the uh, final approval stage, the governor decided to veto the bill, uh, noting that from an enforcement standpoint, that probably would not be as effective as education. And uh, to, to, to uh, think in terms of the educational aspect, uh, we can see that because from an enforcement standpoint, uh, there are a lot of components that would be necessary to uh, enforce a law if it were in place, as opposed to being able to educate someone who probably had no idea that there was even uh, uh, some harm involved in what they were doing. Mm. So in this instance, uh, it is our belief that at this stage, education is the best way to address this matter. Wonderful. And speaking of education, there are people that don't know what the laws are when it comes to texting and driving. So, Lieutenant Granberry, what is the law? Well, in the city of Irving, we do have a law that prohibits cell phone use uh, within school zones. And uh, as far as the state is concerned, uh, with, with, with young people who are under the age of 18, when you get your driver's license, you have a graduated driver's license. And for the first uh, portion of that license period, uh, you are not allowed to have uh, more than one non-family member in the car with you. Uh, at a time, and that is another distraction, multiple people in the car mm. with you, and, uh, and also you're not allowed to use a cell phone oh. uh, while you're driving. So that's part of the graduated driver's license program, but there's not a statewide ban. And, and uh, to a, a point to Judge Adams' uh, a point that he made is, is that from an enforcement standpoint, if I see somebody without a seatbelt on, mm -hmm. it's clear that they don't have a seatbelt on. But if I see somebody with a handheld device in their hand, I'm not really able to tell if they're texting, calling, looking at directions on some kind of a handheld GPS device. Um, it is distracted, and if, if there were a law written that was, was more specific to the or, or less specific, mm -hmm. in other words, not just texting while driving, but if I it see. was you know, using a personal device while driving or distracted, then, then it might be more enforceable. The burden of proof is, is a little high on that. Good point. And Judge Adams, he kind of pointed out that the laws are a little different for those 18 and under. Is it more stricter? How does it work? It is more strict because um, one thing that, uh, that uh, the law is based upon is 
Uh, some, some, some analysis that suggests that uh, when it comes to novice drivers, uh, as Lieutenant Granberry was, was mentioning, uh, when it comes to their ability to be able to multitask, if I can use that term, mm -hmm. well, we would think that, um, that, that anyone could multitask, but uh, the truth is, is that the brain does not multitask. Mm -hmm. That's what the research shows. And when it comes to a novice driver, a teenager, uh, their brain is really still under development, and it mm -hmm. will not have fully developed to the age generally of 25. So the requirements are stricter in that, as uh, Lieutenant Granberry was saying, a novice driver cannot uh, use a cell phone for 12 months after receiving their license. If a person is under a permit, uh, the same thing applies. They're not able to use a cell phone while they're training to drive because when they get a license, they're not going to be able to use it. Um, also, there are some additional laws that don't pertain necessarily to teens. Uh, Lieutenant Granberry mentioned that uh, cell phone usage is banned in school zones. Mm -hmm. It's also uh, a law that bus drivers are not able to use a cell phone while they're transporting passengers. Hmm. Um, just as an, as an aside, the uh, federal government has recently uh, made it um, uh, prohibited the use of cell phone usage in their own vehicles. And also uh, they have, uh, the Department of Transportation has uh, prohibited the use of uh, text, or texting by interstate carriers such as buses and commercial trucks. So it, there's enough stringency to go around, but I think that the reason is very clear is that it is inherently dangerous uh, to use these devices in, when your priority should be on the main, top, the main issue of driving. Right, and that's the message we're really trying to hit home here. And Lieutenant Granberry, let's talk a little bit more about um, school zones mm -hmm. and the laws in school zones, just to lay it out and make it completely clear for everyone. Uh, well, it is prohibited when the school zone uh, is in force. So when you drive by and, and it's during the school zone times, drop off the kids, pick up the kids from school during those times, it is prohibited. So that's for everyone, not just the school bus driver. Everybody, yes. And Lieutenant Granberry, we most commonly think of teens when it comes to texting, but mm -hmm. it's really a big problem across all age groups, right? Well, it is. The, the, uh, uh, the gr age group 20 and under, is highly represented in that, mm -hmm. uh, that group that is the largest group involved in distracted driving. But the actual, uh, the research showed that, that one of the larger groups was the 30 to 38 age group. Wow. Uh, that was actually uh, texting and cell phone use uh, distraction. Interesting, and Judge Adams, your, your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, I agree, and the research will bear that out as well. Um, just to give the audience some perspective on what we, what we mean in terms of, of danger. Uh, the National Traffic uh, at National Safety Council had uh, compiled some statistics about uh, the number of accidents that were related to distracted driving nationwide. And in the uh, year 2009, it was shown that there was some 448,000 accidents wow. that involved distracted driving. And of those 448,000 accidents, just under 6,000 of those were fatalities. In the state of Texas, uh, in that same year, uh, 100,000 accidents were related or uh, to distracted driving. So, although uh, many of us, when we drive by an accident, you know, it's a it's it's a horrible thing to to see. But when you get into why or what was the underlying cause, mm -hmm. and if you find out that it could have been one of those 100,000 or it could have been one of those 448,000. The one thing that we need to keep in mind is that all of these types of accidents, if they're related to this distracted driving, cell phone usage and texting are preventable. Wow, and you gave out some big numbers there, so this distracted driving is really affecting a whole lot of people. Well, you know, we caught up with one businessman who has an app on his phone that responds while he's driving. Let's take a listen. Well, I have a 17 year old son that is a junior in high school and he, we live in Irving, but he goes to school in Fort Worth at Nolan Catholic High School. So he has a 25 mile each direction commute. So I cannot tell him not to text while I drive. All I can do is beg him not to text while I drive. And we know we have some good friends that have had kids that have died and some that are recovering now in the hospital from texting and driving. So this was an app that AT&T offered, I put it on there and I could put my own message on there and it says, you know, I can't respond right now because I'm driving, I'm trying to set an example for my son to keep him from doing it. And if I don't do it, then hopefully he won't do it. 
Very interesting. I hadn't heard of that app, but it's one that I'm sure a lot of parents and just a lot of people in general will be interested in getting. And I know, Judge Adams, there are some other ideas people of all ages can use. Give us some. Well, I would say that uh, one of the practical ways of avoiding driving or driving while texting while driving or using sales is to put it away. Mm -hmm. Put it in a glove box. There you go. Put it in a console. Uh, change one's greeting. Uh, and I've done that myself to change my greeting to let anyone who's calling me know that if I'm not picking up the phone, I'm either away from the phone or I'm driving. And I will return the call or the text when I am in a safe place and have an opportunity to do so. Um, in addition to that, if one feels that they need to actually respond to a text, find a safe place to pull over so that at that juncture you can, pull, you can review the text, send, send the message, make the call, or if nothing else, make sure that everyone knows in advance at what time that I'll be available for calls and I'll be calling you as opposed to you needing to call me. But there are a number of ways and combinations of ways to make it possible to resist the urge mm -hmm. to respond to a call when it comes in while driving. Good advice. And Wayne, same question for you. Do you have some other ideas and tips for us? Absolutely. Turn it off or at least put it off to the side and, and as Judge Adams indicated, put it far enough away to where you won't be tempted to lean over and, and grab it and so forth. I will tell you, I've, I've done that in the past. I've grabbed that thing and, you know, glanced down at it and, you know, you're thinking no harm, no foul. You're just glancing at it. You're not texting or anything. Mm -hmm. But as he mentioned earlier, you know, the moment that you take your eye off the road, you know, it only takes a split second. And, and you know, as long as it takes to look at that, bad things can happen. So. Yeah, and Lieutenant Granberry, you saw that firsthand as you're explaining about the woman you thought looked like she was an intoxicated driver, but was actually texting on her phone or using her phone and distracted in that way. What are some other tips and advice that you can add to that? Uh, I think the most important thing is as a parent is to set the example, is live the example. You can tell the kids till you're blue in the face and, you know, if they see you on the phone, they're going to mimic what you do. And the other thing might be to talk to your child about the dangers of it. Uh, you can go to the Irving Police Department website. We do have a link mm -hmm. to uh, distracted.gov, I believe it is, okay. uh, the website that has this information on there. But you can also sit down with your child, explain those dangers, uh, maybe write up a contract, some mm -hmm. kind of an agreement with that child, and get your teen to, to agree to that. And then also spread the word about the dangers of distracted driving and cell phone usage while driving. Great tips from all of you. And, and Lieutenant Granberry, texting is only one type of distraction, but there are several. Tell us about some of the others. Um, I know I see in my morning commute, I usually see uh, uh, people grooming themselves in the mirrors, uh, you know, of the car with the mirror down, blocking, you know, their field of vision while they're doing makeup, brushing teeth. I saw a lady brushing her teeth the other day driving oh, wow. in. <laughs> saw someone eating a bowl of cereal. Uh, oh those those are all some some examples of uh, talking to someone in the back seat you know leaning way back over into the back seat while you're talking to somebody um, programming your your GPS oh, yeah. you know you, you do that you know when I would train my recruits you know we didn't have GPS we had maps goes at the time and what I would tell my recruits is don't even start driving until you've looked at the maps go you know where you're going and then go because you waste so much time driving down the road looking at the map and that's, you know, looking at a map is an old-fashioned form of distraction, but, but all of those are, are good examples. I would say so. There are some crazy examples, but I'm sure it's fairly common. A lot of people are thinking eating cereal while driving, yes. but I'm sure it's probably not the only person that's out there doing it. Judge Adams, I know when it comes to talking on a, a cell phone, some people feel like they're okay doing that and using a hands-free device, but what do you find when you actually check out the research? What does it show? Well, admittedly, I was once one of them that believed that hands-free made a difference as opposed to uh, handheld. But the research shows that uh, there really is no difference. Uh, Carnegie Mellon had uh, done a study that suggested that when one is involved in a cellular conversation, that's even different than having a passenger in your right-hand hmm. uh, right passenger seat. Uh, the reason being is that when it comes to a cell phone call, the mind tends to prioritize its attention to the call because there are limited cues as to what the meaning of the conversation is about. You have pauses in a cell phone. Sometimes uh, there are calls being dropped or, you know, changing cell towers, and then there's a long pause, and that can mean a lot of things right. if you're on the receiving end of that. Um, but the truth be told is, is that you're prioritizing away from the task at hand, which is driving. A uh, passenger to your right is different. Mm 
hmm. because a passenger will give you all kinds of cues as to what the conversation is. They'll give you uh, eye inflection, inflection in the voice. Uh, they're also a different, uh, an additional pair of eyes. So if you drift off into the conversation, there's somebody to say, look out, <laughs> because they can see the uh, environment changing before them as well. Sure. When it comes to handheld, uh, uh, handheld or hands-free, the cues are the same. You can't see the other person on the other end of the phone. You can't uh, see their expression. You can't uh, look them in the face and glance to them as opposed to trying to look at the uh, look out into the uh, into the uh, the environment and right. hold on the conversation. So there's really no different. And um, I'll just mention that Texas A&M just released a study uh, earlier this month, in which case they were suggesting that when a person is engaged in that kind of conversation, their reaction time is slowed by double. Wow. And when a person is engaged in traveling, let's say at highway speeds at 55 miles per hour, if they happen to get adrift into a conversation or if they have to happen to be texting, with the average time it takes just a glance at a text, they can travel the length of a football field. Hmm. So it, interesting, uh, definitely it interesting research. And Lieutenant Granberry, what else does research show about um, distracted driving when it comes to using hands-free devices? What are you finding? The, the uh, same study uh, from Carnegie Mellon mentioned that your brain activity that is focused on driving is reduced by 37% when you are, you know, in a conversation on the phone, whether it's hand freeze, hand or hand free or handheld, uh, it reduces to almost, you know, 37%. Wow. And that, that kind of surprised me. Very interesting. And Wayne, I want to come to you and ask you, you're busy all the time. So how do you balance the need to respond to coworkers and residents with the need to be safe? Well, first of all, I don't have an extra 37% to spare. <laughs> so we'll start with that. Uh, I will tell you that, that coworkers and residents, when I speak with them on the phone, they deserve my full attention. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly uh, driving down the street at 50 miles an hour with a cell phone to my ear, they wouldn't get my full attention. Good point. And so, you know, there's plenty of opportunities in this city and throughout the Metroplex. There's always an opportunity to be able to pull over and speak safely to those individuals and again, give them the full attention they deserve. Good advice. And, you know, men, that was a big topic, distracted driving. It was a big topic at this year's Transportation Summit at Irving. Here is a report on that. We have all seen it, drivers focusing less than their full attention to driving their vehicles. Former state trooper Gary Parker says cell phone calls and texting are only two of many distractions, and he's seen them all. I stopped this lady driving like this. I walked up, I said, lady, what you doing? She said, I'm putting on my pantyhose. And she really was, they were down to there. The situations are so ridiculous, they sound funny. And then I thought, if I'd have stopped this woman 20 minutes ago, what would she have been wearing? <laughs> but the consequences can be tragic. Jennifer Smith knows that. A nine-year-old boy and a three-year-old little boy now have no mother, all because of a text message. Smith and Parker are among a panel of speakers tackling the topic of distracted driving at Irving's 14th Annual Transportation and Infrastructure Summit. They say the problem is not new. For decades there was this research and for decades thousands of people had been dying. Well, I asked a group of uh, driver education students one time, how far does this go back? And this kid said, go back to horse and buggy days. I said, well, that's a good guess, but it's wrong because a horse is smart enough not to run itself into a tree, <laughs> right? Parker says a big problem is the lack of educational programs. We need to start focusing on the task at hand, and that is the operation of that 4,200-pound missile that you are in charge of. Jennifer Smith says current laws are not adequate. A crash killed her mother. The person who killed my mother, he, he didn't serve a day in jail. She made it her mission to research the problem and was stunned by what she found. A driver making a cell phone call hit and killed this child and got only minor traffic tickets. He was fined $50. A distracted driver also got only a small fine after causing the crash that paralyzed this aspiring football star. She drug him 20 feet before she even realized she hit him. The first step is to get the law passed because without the law then the penalties can't be there. But yes, we need to see increased penalties. There has to be something to make people not want to do this again. Distracted driving was just one of dozens of topics discussed during this four-day conference at the Omni Mandalay.
So many sad stories and many of them right here in Irving. Um, Lieutenant Granberry, do you see distracted driving as a growing problem? Well, it is. The technology, as the technology gets smaller and smaller, the devices get more uh, frequent, you know, and my 15-year-old son now has, you know, several handheld devices that distract him right. and he's not driving, you know. Uh, and so as the technology gets smaller, you know, we're going to see more and more problems with that. Hmm. Which is definitely not a good thing. Of course, this is even worse when alcohol is involved. Um, Lieutenant, I know that your team is very active in, in keeping drunken drivers off the roads, but tell me about some of your initiatives in that area in particular. We, we do uh, several uh, no refusal weekends uh, throughout the year uh, where we will um, partner with other agencies. We'll partner with a nurse uh, from one of our area hospitals. Uh, we will have a judge come in. And what we do is we will take blood from every person that is arrested uh, and suspected of DWI. And we send that to the lab for analysis. And uh, if the person uh, accepts uh, giving us the blood, then uh, you know, we don't uh, get a warrant. But if the person refuses and we have probable cause to show that they were driving while they were intoxicated, we will present that to a judge if the probable cause is accepted, then they will issue a warrant for that person, uh, for that blood from that person. So we do those uh, four or five times a year. Interesting. And, and you know, and try to reduce or impact, uh, you know, uh, DWI. Wow. And uh, Wayne, I want to broaden the focus just a little more in our final moments here. November is the month in which we mark Municipal Court Week. So tell me what you are most proud of in the courts. Let me tell you, there's, there's plenty to be proud of, particularly here at the Irving Municipal Court. Um, the state does recognize Municipal Court Week, uh, November the 7th through the 11th. Uh, at the Irving Municipal Court, we are so fortunate to have great employees that truly understand the meaning of the words public servants. Uh, we do a lot of things for a lot of folks. Uh, when people come into our court, we guarantee good service, first and foremost. And as a matter of fact, uh, our survey results all reflect a 98 or 99% uh, satisfaction rate with our service, which is something that you don't you know, normally associate with a court experience. We also offer things such as payment plans. Uh, if you do not have a means to pay traffic tickets and those sort of things, we have a community service program. We offer, offer a lot of options, and there's a lot of work that goes into all that. And again, I can't say enough about the staff we have over there. Uh, that's the one message I get to, to push out. Irving is, it's, we're very fortunate to have that staff. Yes, and the one message I'd like us to end with is going back to distracted driving. So I'm gonna give you all a brief opportunity to just share your last minute thoughts, final thoughts on distracted driving and preventing people from doing that. And we'll start with you, Lieutenant. Well, I think in doing this research, the thing that shocked me the most about it is the driving statistics, the last statistics from 2009, Judge Adams mentioned those, that there was about almost 6,000 people who died in accidents related wow. to uh, distracted driving, and about 1,000 of those were specifically cell phone related, and I guarantee you that's underreported. But the thing that shocked me about that was that in Iraq and Afghanistan, we've lost about 6,000 young men. And so those numbers from one year of distracted driving is more than what we've lost in 10 years of combat. And that really shocked me when I saw that number. I can imagine. And your last thoughts on distracted driving, Wayne? Well, again, I have a 17-year-old son, so I have personal reasons to be interested in it. I will tell you, and going back to Judge Adams' point earlier, you know, I think we, we live in a generation now that not everyone necessarily has a landline in their home, but everybody has a cell phone. And those cell phones are a part of life, uh, just like things we took for granted as kids. You know, we have a whole generation of kids that have grown up you know, having a cell phone in their hand. And, and mm -hmm. this is a good opportunity to hopefully educate folks on, on maybe not developing bad habits and people like me that perhaps had started developing some of those habits, you know, perhaps be aware of it and make a conscious effort to get away from those habits. Good advice, and we are out of time, but I thank you, Judge Adams, for sharing all of your thoughts and comments, and I thank you also, Wayne and Lieutenant, for being here this evening, and of course, we thank you for watching. I'm Starlene Stringer. Please be sure to join us on Wednesday, November 30th at 7 p.m. for our next edition of Open Line. We'll be on location from the Irving Fire Department to talk about holiday fire safety and other issues. If you have questions, email them to ictn at cityofirving.org or connect with us on Facebook and Twitter.
and we'll get answers for you on our next edition of Open Line. We'll see you then.